hello viewers how are you welcome to my channel first have a look at this video this woman had a nasal surgery and in the post-operative days she experienced clear watery fluid coming through his nose on bending forward and this is due to CSF leaking out through the nose which is known as CSF rhinorrhea. Today I'm going to talk about CSF rhinorrhea. First to know what is CSF. CSF is the abbreviation of cerebrospinal fluid. It is the fluid that forms a jacket around the brain and spinal cord to protect it from the jerking of day-to-day -day activities. And leakage of CSF from subarachnoid space into the nasal cavity due to defect in dura, bone or mucosa is known as CSF rhinorrhea. Although it is a clear watery fluid, but it can be blood mixed in case of acute head injury. So what are the etiologies behind CSF rhinorrhea? Most CSF rhinorrheas are traumatic that can be due to accidental or due to surgical causes. The most common surgical causes are endoscopic sinus surgery, transspenoidal hypophysectomy, nasal polypectomy and skull based surgery. It can be due to inflammatory causes like nasal polyposis, fungal rhinosinusitis, osteomyelitis and mucosilia of the sinus. Benign and malignant tumors invading the skull base can cause CSF rhinorrhea. Congenital lesions like meningocele, meningoencephalocele and gliomas can be associated with CSF rhinorrhea. In some cases, patient can spontaneously leak CSF due to intermittent rise of intracranial pressure. Now come to the site of leakage. The origin of the fluid can be from anterior, middle or posterior cranial fossa. CSF from anterior cranial fossa reaches the nose via cribriform plate, roof of the ethmoid air cells and frontal sinus. CSF leak from the middle cranial fossa follows injury to the spanoid sinus. In fracture of the temporal bone, the CSF can collect in the middle ear and then it goes into the nose through eustachian tube which is known as CSF autorhinorrhea. For diagnosis, we have to take history from the patient. The history is typical, that is, clear watery fluid comes out on bending forward or on straining. It typically occurs in early morning when the patient bends forward. This is known as reservoir sign. In this case, the fluid first collects in the sinuses, especially the spenoid sinus, and then comes out on bending forward. It is important to distinguish the CSF rhinorrhea from nasal discharge of allergic or vasomotor rhinitis. In case of CSF rhinorrhea, patient may give history of trauma or nasal surgery. But in case of nasal discharge due to allergic or vasomotor rhinitis, the patient will give history of sneezing, nasal stuffiness or itching. The CSF fluid cannot be snipped back but nasal secretion can be snipped back. CSF fluid is thin and watery but nasal secretion can be slimy due to mucus and in some cases it can be watery. If the fluid is tested then the CSF will taste sweet but nasal secretion will taste as salty. Sugar content of CSF fluid is high that is more than 30 mg per dl but in case of nasal secretion it is less than 10 mg per dl. A protein which is known as beta 2 transferrin is present in CSF but it is absent in nasal secretion. CSF rhinorrhea from head trauma shows double target sign. That is, when the secretion is collected on a filter paper, it will show a central red zone with peripheral lighter halo. Nasal endoscopy can help to localize CSF leak in some cases. Autoscopic examination should be done to identify if there is any fluid in the middle ear 
which will indicate that it is a case of CSF autorhinorrhea. The laboratory test we can do is beta 2 transparent test. The nasal discharge of CSF rhinorrhea is tested for this protein. This protein is seen in CSF, aqueous humor and perilim. In some cases of abnormal transparent metabolism, beta 2 transparent can appear in blood and can give false positive result. These conditions are chronic liver disease, inborn error of glycogen metabolism, genetic variant forms of transferrin, neuropsychiatric disorder, and rectal carcinoma. For this reason, some authors recommend to take simultaneous blood sample to exclude the source of error, but some others do not feel it as a necessity. So the first laboratory test we can do is the beta 2 transferrin test, and the second one is beta trace protein. This test is widely used in Europe, but facilities are not available everywhere. Glucose testing of the CSF fluid by oxidase peroxidase examination is no longer used. For localization of site of CSF leak, we can do nasal endoscopy. We can do high resolution CT scan. The axial card can show defect in frontal or spinal sinus. T2 weighted MRI can also be done. It is indicated if encephalocele or intracranial pathology is suspected. CT cisternogram is another option. Now come to the treatment of CSF rhinorrhea. Early cases of post-traumatic CSF rhinorrhea can be cured with conservative measures. These are bed rest with the elevation of the head to decrease the intracranial pressure, avoidance of nose blowing, sneezing and straining activities. Stool softeners must be given because straining on defecation can make the condition worse. Acetazolamide is given to reduce the production of CSF. Prophylactic antibiotic is given to prevent meningitis. Sometimes lumbar drain is indicated. When conservative measures fail, then we have to opt for surgical options. Surgical repair can be done by neurosurgical intracranial approach. Extradural approaches such as external ethmoidectomy for cribriform plate, transseptal spinoidal approach for spinoid, osteoplastic flap approach for frontal sinus leak. But nowadays, in majority of the cases, the treatment of choice is endoscopic repair of the CSF leakage. The success rate is very good with 90% at first attempt. In this procedure, after localizing the site of leakage, the edges of the defect are freshened. Then, extradurally, a graft is underlaid. The graft can be nasal mucosal flap. Pre-nasal mucosal graft can be a composite graft by incorporating with the nasal turbinate bone, conchal or septal cartilage, fascia lata or temporalis fascia. If the bony defect is greater than 2 cm, then it is repaired with the help of a cartilage and followed by placement of mucosa. Placement of sargicel and gel form further strengthen the area. In the end, high antibiotic smeared nasal packing is given to support the graft. Sometimes fat from abdomen or thigh is used to plug the defect in place of fascia. After surgical repair, prophylactic antibiotic is given and lumbar drain is given if the CSF pressure is high. After surgical repair in the post-operative period, the nasal pack is removed after 7 to 10 days. The patient is advised to avoid nasal sneezing or straining activities for about a month. That's all for today. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.